live from Madrid, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We're back in Madrid, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, Peter Burris. And many time CUBE guest Xavier Poisson is back. He's the Vice President of Cloud 28 Plus and service providers worldwide for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And he's joined by Eugene Viscovich, who's the Chief Business Officer at Beyond a Cloud 28 Plus partner. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Welcome back. Xavier, it's good to see you again. Thank you, hi. Hi, so give us the update on Cloud 20. It started out as this sort of focused European effort. It's exploded now globally. What's the update? So, I don't remember, uh, I don't know if you remember, but it was last year, the same event. We were in London, I believe. Right. And we were saying, okay, we are 300. How many you will be next year? <laughs> I took the back, it would be 700. We are 700. Wow, congratulations. 700 members who have been expanding in the different geographies. So, uh, also in Europe, Middle East and Africa, but we expanded in North America, in APAC, Latin American, Caribbean. So now we are present in 60 countries. Uh, we are uh, proposing 24,000 cloud services. So the catalog has been expanding dramatically. We are offering uh, capabilities, data center capabilities from all partners in 33 countries. And we can offer from 400 data centers already. So average, we have uh, 40,000 hits per month on the, on the platform, acquiring members and so on. And uh, yes, it has been a, a delight to, to launch that everywhere and it's, uh, it's really taking off very, very quickly. And the basic value proposition, you, got, you are essentially enabling uh, uh, cloud partners to create cloud-like business capabilities. Yeah, right? so what we do is, uh, first of all, we enable the partners to get known on the market, mm -hmm. on this side, to publish other services, built and consume also. So it's not only yes, pass, SaaS, but also integration services and so on, because it's a comprehensive value chain. Then what we do, we, we are not a marketplace where people go and leave. In the center, they can speak every day. So they publish articles, thought leadership articles around security, big data, manufacturing, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. This year, only this year, they have published 600 articles. So when you are a customer, you go to this platform, you can see the offering, but you can see how the, the, the vendor is positioning himself around the market, is value-add on what they are doing. So digital marketing a lot, also for them. We have been uh, increasing the, the value on the market of many of our partners with social media, because we have very good activity in this area. And also lead generation engine, because now we have so much offerings that we can target specific campaigns for our partners in specific geographies and generate a lot of leads on the market. Last but not least, the market is evolving. We have a lot of partners, so we create platform-connected offerings. Example we have done is uh, a specific cloud in a box for manufacturing for plants, where in six clicks you can provision from Cloud28 Plus all your information system for a plant. So this is also the kind of things that we do. Great. Okay, Eugene, tell us about Vion. Why are you in business? What's your story? Okay, yes. Just take a few minutes about Vion right. because it's not a very well-known name you know, around the world and uh, don't be ashamed if you don't know Vion because it still is the seventh largest mobile operator in the world. Uh, it's significant, we are today around 42,000 employees uh, over 12 different countries. Uh, I have to say, very unusual countries, not the type of countries you may choose you know, to go for holidays, but it would be a shame because honestly some of them are good. Uh, like, you know, all the Asia, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Armenia, Tajikistan, uh, Kazakhstan, Georgia, Russia. Uh, we have also emerging market, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Algeria, and one, only one European market, which is Italy, with win, win three. Which means it's a very, you know, large region. We are dealing with 10, more than 10% of the total population of the globe, 235 million customers, which is significant. And within this organization, there is an enterprise division, yeah. which I'm leading, which is around 4,500 people dedicated for enterprise and wholesale for revenue around $3 billion, just to give you, you know, a scale on who we are. Again, not very well known, 
but definitely within our footprint, we're the number one in this particular region of the world. It's a sizable, substantial business. Definitely, yes. So what's driving your business today? Obviously, mobile is, is yes, exploding. Yes, it's clear we came from the mobile you know, business. Uh, we are number one mobile operator in the majority of these countries. Mm. We have what we call some fixed business. And since the last two, three years when I joined the organization, we completely reorganized our business model and moving more into the what we call value-added services, ICT services. And one of the components definitely was to try to find a partner for our cloud proposition. You need to understand that we're in a very emerging market for this type of subject. We're still in a very traditional way, you know, how enterprise operating, they own the infrastructure, their own data center, they own their servers, the management platform, and their own people. And they have not yet shifted to this new model, which is to try to outsource some of the infrastructure. And this is where we came into the game as a global provider in order to help enterprise really, you know, to operate this ship. There is also another interesting you know, situation is every time you know, we build a cloud proposition, usually we try you know, to centralize this and have different countries. In our part of the world, it's not possible. We have to set up a cloud platform in each, every single of our country for regulatory constraint, which is not very economical, but definitely it's an opportunity for us to lead this market, especially you know, with the HP Enterprise. Well, it allows you to differentiate as well from some of the mega cloud providers that everybody knows, everybody talks about. So, so is that a primary way in which you compete? Oh, completely. It's clear the big players today are not very well implemented in this part of the world because of this particular constraint outside of Italy, which is a little bit different game. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's clear in Russia and Eurasia, uh, yes, uh, today there is a opportunity. We believe that to, we want to be the single you know, provider within this region, uh, operating you know, across different market segments because we're covering you know, from so up to multinational account, even government, and having you know, a set of you know, value proposition we can offer across every single of our countries. So is it common that, that you know, amongst the Cloud 28 Plus partners, there's that theme of local presence, of course, but is there also a differential uh, in terms of what the partners will do, the types of work they'll do, yeah. the customizations. Yeah, uh, typically the case of, uh, of Veon is uh, very specific because they address very specific markets. Some other players will, uh, will ask different things, but what is very uh, important in the case of Veon is first of all to have a, a ready to deploy solution that you can industrialize in different countries. So this is the reason why we played with one of the technology partners of uh, Cloud 28 Plus with Ormuco, who has a cloud in a box solution that can be deployed uh, and managed uh, remotely if needed, uh, but that, that was fitting the needs of the market. Okay? Then what we need to do is really to engage locally. So in this particular case, what we are going to do is to engage with the HP organization in order that when we have the needs for our customers to go for cloud computing kind of workloads, we say, okay, we have the solution, we have a partner, a Cloud 28 Plus partner, who took the decision to go with us, and we trust each other, so you, Mr. Customer, you want to do backup as a service, disaster recovery as a service, compute, storage as a service, or security as a service, Veon is there, and the good point is, Veon is there on very qualified hardware of HP Synergy, with a very good solution, which is one of the solutions ready for service providers of HPE and operated by a very serious telco operator with the number six on the market, this is VR. And we go together. So, in this, in this particular case, uh, what was interesting was uh, to have a solution that can be deployed everywhere the same, with workloads that may fit with the different expectations of the market, engage the HP people to play with, and then we market, and with that, on TFS, we'll amplify their message. We will be able to drive lead generation campaigns. We'll be able to onboard our resellers. Because one thing I believe is that in, in this kind of regions, people don't go, as you said, Eugene, directly to the cloud. No. They continue to go to their resellers and what do I need to do? And here, you know that we have the largest reseller network uh, in the industry. So we will introduce this solution to our resellers in order that when a reseller of HPE is in front of such a case, he can have the, the mind to say, okay, let's engage with VR. So this is the way we are going to operate. So when I think of many of the Akistan countries, 
uh, I think of natural resources, challenging topography, challenging terrain. Uh, how does the mm -hmm. reality, the physical reality, and the industries that typify that region impact the way you're providing cloud services? Uh, it's clear, we're talking sometimes a very, very large you know, geography in terms of country size. When well, you take only you know, Russia, Mountainous. 11 time zone, you have yeah, yeah. one single country. And when we operate, yes, we have to spread our capability in order to be able to touch every single country, including in terms of infrastructure, especially as a carrier, I let you imagine, you know, how much we need to pull, you know, fiber, you know, cable across the country and have, you know, these different, you know, uh, set up of, you know, uh, infrastructure, cloud, you know, proposition to make sure we can serve better in terms of latency, especially when we're talking about, you know, financial sector and so on, which brings some level of complexity. And as I said earlier, also some level of, you know, efficiency in terms of investment, because uh, we're not in a perfect world, especially when we talk about the regulatory, you know, constraint, uh, which, yes, we need to find, you know, some middle way, how we can have a better, you know, being still competitive, but at the same time still delivering the expected quality. But you're right, uh, the, this particular part of the world requires a lot of work in terms of you know, physical you know, uh, infrastructure and also in our team. Uh, our people are spread across these different countries. Uh, and uh, for that reason, yes, it's not an easy, an easy situation. Does it drive, are, are you likely to see a higher demand? HPE talks about the intelligent edge. Are you likely to see a higher demand for things like the Intelligent Edge because of the nature of the natural resource industries, you know, petrochemical, et cetera, mountainous regions and a lot of the communities that you serve? Is that going to be a driver of new services or is it going to be something else? What do you well, think? I think there will be you know, two aspects. The first one, there is definitely a, a requirement driven very often by very large multinational corporations. You'll be surprised how these multinational corporations are covering this part of the world. You, you have natural resources, all the Western industry is present. And because they are present, they need to bring you know, their standard in right. terms of you know, infrastructure they're using within this particular uh, country. Now the reason, yes, the demand is coming from there. At the same time, you have the rest of the market in terms of large local you know, businesses where it's clear, they are moving. If you're looking at our part of the world, we are exactly when we were 10 years ago in Europe, uh, in North America and Asia. We are really into emerging in phase uh, in adopting you know, this type of you know, infrastructure. It's clear, it's going to go much more quicker because on top of that, enterprises have big pressure to reduce cost, uh, but at the same time, not to sacrifice the quality, what they're looking, which again, together we're capable and we can demonstrate they can get better for less. And, and this is a big work, and that's the reason when Xavier was mentioning about working together in each of the country, this was one of the critical you know, element in choosing with HP Enterprise, because I'm a mobile operator and fix. I'm not yet recognized as an ICT services or cloud. It was very important for me if we wanted to go very quickly to associate a brand with a leading organization like HP. And I have to say, I've tested several times, every time we say, okay, we are in partnership with HP Enterprise, we are part of the Cloud 28 Plus, this ring immediately the bell of the, you know, the enterprise we're meeting, and it's easier for us to move quicker. But definitely, I think we have a, a big, big opportunity. Large market to address, but definitely, you know, something interesting you know, to go after. And it's early days, it's only been two, two years now. Um, what do you want from Hewlett Packard Enterprise and what are you guys going to deliver? Let's talk roadmap a little bit. First, from the, the, the partner well, slash customer. What, what are you driving HPE and Xavier to well, deliver? For me, there will be three axes in terms of development. The first one in terms of value proposition. We want to be able over the next you know, 12, 18 months to be able to offer to the market you know, a full set of propositions. As mentioned earlier by Xavier, in terms of you know, public, private, hybrid, you know, cloud and moving to, you know, different solution. We're talking about, uh, you know, security uh, and also we're moving into more vertical market approach. We're talking about IoT mm -hmm. where we be also some direction. This is the first act. The second one, it's in terms of, you know, countries. We're not going to launch our platform in every single, as I said earlier, 
we need to do it country by country. We're starting with Russia, yeah. uh, Ukraine, uh, Pakistan will come behind, Algeria. Very quickly over the next 12 months, we're going to launch one by one these different countries. And the last element for us, which is also very key, is market you know, segment. We are organized, as I said, by market segment. So small, medium enterprise, large key account, multinational corporation, and government. And each of these segments have different requirements. And we need to customize our approach. And this is where working with HP and Ormoco, we want to have a very customized by market segment mm -hmm. from highly customized to off the shelf type proposition. But for me, this would be the three key axes in terms of development working with HP Enterprise. And Xavier, how does that align with your roadmap? Well, you know, it's, it's fully aligned in the sense that, uh, first of all, uh, we are expanding a lot the value prop of Plat28 Plus with ISV software vendors. And the problems of, uh, of uh, telcos and service providers moving to the cloud, that's correct, there is ICT branding, and they, there we can help, but this is the content. Because, uh, you know, one day or another, they will face what the others have been facing, even if this, in these countries, meaning yes is not enough. So, if you have a portfolio of applications, vertical, horizontal applications, that they can use to continue to satisfy the demand of the market, so it will be great for them, and we, we are investing a lot in this area. The other thing is, today, I believe that we have now reached a maturity on digital marketing with Cloud 28 Plus, which is impressive. Uh, we had a, a big event yesterday. I will not give to you the number of uh, impression we had only in four hours. It has been massive. If we take that, we put this at the disposal of this partner in every single country, we will speed them on, speed them on, on the market. So this, these are the, the two big elements. The third element is what I said about this platform connected solutions, because the more we go, the more we see that our outside-in approach with Plat28 Plus, thinking customer first, is excellent. We need to continue on that. But as you were mentioning, the, the, the move to the edge, we see more and more solutions for energy, for manufacturing, oil and gas, environment, that will need pure hybrid because you cannot put everything into a cloud. And where we are lucky with uh, Veon is that they have the network. So you can imagine they have their big cloud, in a, in a country, but they could deploy also some private cloud very, very quickly in specific area within an oil and gas uh, land or I don't know where, an energy, mining. Or where you, oh, well, you have not that. Mm. And you cannot, because of latency issues, you cannot go directly to the cloud, but right. you need to handle at the edge, send back to the cloud for analytics, for AI and so on. And this will be at the disposal for them. And I believe the combination of the two for that will be for the benefit of the customer. So this is my... I completely point. agree. I think today yeah. our, our approach uh, in terms of you know, the partnership, uh, as I said, uh, I think when we're going to uh, uh, deal with very large organization, it's going to be very infrastructure type discussion driven, but when we're going to look down, it's purely, definitely services, content. Yeah. Uh, I want to be able to address, for example, the uh, marketing department, how we can help them to understand the behavior of a co uh, consumer by you know using our data you know uh, big data you know analytic uh, in terms of delivery for an organization using you know fleet management yeah. uh, in terms of manufacturing using more iot but when you're looking at these different solutions what is below is a type of infrastructure is to have a, a cloud you know infrastructure where we can rely on a strong partnership uh, bringing this solution and offering to our customer definitely a very cost effective but also agile yeah. Uh, uh, very, you know, able to move with the market demand in a very vertical way, but definitely this is the way we want to work together. Excellent, all right, we have to leave it there, gentlemen. Cloud is exploding. Uh, cloud is going to be local. We've talked about this a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, hybrid IT, intelligence edge with a, with a local flavor. Gentlemen, thanks very much for coming. Thank you, Thank you very much. And congratulations for all the success. Day. Day. Thank, Thank you. you. All, right. all right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Be right back. <laughs>